Hello everyone, this is Ramirez with Tidewater Renaissance Fighting Arts. Um, sorry we haven't had a whole lot of videos uploaded to the channel. Um, quite frankly, we've had an influx of new students and that has affected things. Also, uh, we're getting ready for uh, King's Cup. I have a couple of uh, students and fellow attendees that are going and uh, we've been working on that. So just life has been really busy. I hope that in the latter part of January we can get back to some fighting videos back at the club. But um, I have a couple of things to review so I'll be putting some reviews out there. And the first is an actual review of the Wakusi Cobra Commander helmet. Um, or maskmet or however people want to refer to it. And um, I've done a initial impressions, but I didn't get a chance to fight in it. I've been fighting in it now for, I guess, the better part of a month, month and a half. And I have to say, I really do like this mask. Um, I find it fairly comfortable. Um, it is very solid. Um, what happens, and it's very confusing by looking at the pictures, is you have a clasp at the back of it, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And once you undo that clasp, you can lift the back of the mask up. And that gives you enough space to put your head in. It does have a strap in here, so it's very much like a conventional mask. Um, but it does have that hard plate on the exterior. And then you would simply close that down. That'll give you your kind of neck hole. And then you would clasp it shut. One of the things I like about it is I know people have been very confused about the sizing because most masks you measure the round your head and they say to measure around your face. Now this is an extra large. Most of my masks are extra large and some have been a little too loose. This has been a nice fit. Um, I think that you have to be particular about that measurement so that you do get the correct sizing. And it fits, it probably fits the nicest of the three masks I own. And those would be the um, Absolute Fencing Mask, the PBT 1600 Warrior, and then I have the Wakusi. And the Wakusi is probably, as I said, once I have it on with all my gear, it's the most comfortable. Um, it allows me to move. People have said this is a big mask, but I've measured it against my PBT and my AF, and I think it's slightly larger than the AF, but not dramatically so. So, and certainly the PBT 1600, it's, it's not, it's not any bigger than that mask with the overlay. So I'm quite pleased with it. I think it goes well with my gear. Other things that people have said is that since this is a hard shell, that it would be particularly noisy when you're struck. And I have to say my experience, I've taken several headshots um, and it's not really that loud. Um, it might be something you're not used to because if you're used to uh, overlay, it's soft, you're not gonna hear any sound like that, but it's not deafening or anything. I, I have fought SCA, I have worn steel helmets before and I've worn for many years in the SCA in Markland, I've worn a Japanese Kabuto and that means it has all the lames. Now when you get hit, that's like a set of wind chimes. This is really not that bad and it's something you would just get used to if you got struck with it. On the plus side, that's all. You know, you don't feel a lot of the force of hits. So I would take that little trade off of sound, like I heard it hit me, I accept it hit me, but I didn't have to feel like it hit me. So for me, that's another big selling point on this mask. Um, the fact of the matter is it also has back of the head protection and that's that same solid shell. So if you do unfortunately get hit in the back of the head, it's not like just having material there. It's solid and it'll protect. So overall, my review of this is very good. But that's not to say that it doesn't have some issues. Uh, the first issue has to do with this pad that's at the bottom of the jaw. Uh, when I first bought it, and I have not taped it down, 
it was just loose in the mask. Whatever they had used to adhere it um, did not stick. And um, eventually, I didn't know if it went in the top part of the mask or the bottom part of the mask. I've come to learn that it's really the bottom part of the mask because the top part um, will stop you before it hits, but the bottom, not so much. The bottom needed that padding there. So you may have to glue that back into place. Um, I've had no problems with it when it's generally worn. It just stays there, gravity keeps it. It's never fluffed around. But if I had to put a negative on it, the fact that a quintessential part of padding is loose in the mask is a problem. Um, another thing, if anyone else wants to comment, if they're, they have their mask and that pad actually should be up by the forehead, please let me know because I will move it to the correct place. Um, it has to do with actually fighting it. Um, the back locks in place, so to speak, by having a loop here and a very small clasp here. Now, if you're doing this like when I did my um, initial impressions video, it's not that hard to close it up and to put that clasp on. But if you have all your gear on and forget having gloves and reaching in the back of your head to try to do this little snap in place, this little latch, uh, that's, that's a pain. That, that may not even happen. So you definitely need to have your HEMA squire, you know, with you to kind of latch that up. Just have a buddy come and do that for you because when you, when you're in gear, that's, that just isn't going to happen. Um, if you're really flexible, maybe, but I'm like, when I have all my gear on and everything, trying to reach back, no, I just have to wait for someone to both help me get it on and then help me get it off. That is the one complaint I have about this mask. And it's a fairly minor one at that. It's not hard to get someone in your club to say, hey, would you mind just latching that up or unlatching that up? But that's the only thing. Any other mask you could just lift off yourself. This one, you do need a little bit of assistance to get that closed. I don't know how to resolve that. Maybe if they had moved the, pad, the clasp to one side or the other, um, I think that would be a disadvantage if you're left-handed or right-handed. So probably we're just stuck with it being in the center until they design something different. But other than that, for in terms of fighting, I know other people have said about the weight of the mask. And I don't know, honestly, I don't think it's that much of a difference. If, you know, a couple of grams is going to make or break your game, I don't know that uh, this is the right game for you or just go with a lighter mask then and hopefully not get hit. I prefer highly protective gear and I think that this is a very, very protective mask. Um, once again, having that extra hard shell um, has meant that it, it's done the job and taking the hits I have, I have no real complaints. Um, one thing my, one might say about it is what about the finish? What happens to that as it gets hit? And while you can definitely see there's some definite marks in the helmet where it's gotten hit, they aren't deep. It's not like it's abrasive. To touch it, you couldn't feel where it got hit visually. Um, there are three marks here, three or four. I'll try to put it up to the camera, but I really, you know, you can kind of see them there in the light. But certainly from a distance, you wouldn't notice them. And as I said, those marks, you can't feel. So obviously the, the shell is doing its job. Um, if it had cracks or abrasions, maybe I'd feel differently about that. But I really haven't uh, felt any of that. It's all very smooth, even the parts where it's gotten struck. So I think that this is a good purchase if you're interested. They aren't cheap. They, I think this one cost me, I think it was like 250 or 225 plus shipping. Um, so it wasn't bad in terms of high end protective gear, um, probably comparable to my PBT 
1600 mask, which is another one that's uh, very protective. I do need to do a review on that mask, but um, this has been my go-to. It works well with my kit. And um, as I said, I really liked it. Um, it's been very protective, very useful. And I would encourage people who are like, I don't know, it's a plastic mask. It's like, nope, there's an, there really is an actual mask, like a regular, well, not a regular, but a HEMA fencing mask on the inside. And then as the shell is the overlay. So you don't have to worry about, oh, this is just a piece of plastic with a mesh put on the front. No, it's an actual mask. And then this is the overlay to that mask design. Um, once again, I, the only negative things I can say about it are, you know, once again, that latch in the back. Um, and, you know, yeah, it'll, it'll get little scuffs. You know, if it were a cloth mask, you probably wouldn't, or cloth overlay, you probably wouldn't get that. But other than that, it's really been a fantastic, fun to spar with tool to use in your HEMA kit. And I do recommend the mask. So. With that said, thank you very much. Once again, I'm Ramirez with Tidewater Renaissance Fighting Arts, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.